Hey guys, uh, as promised, I'm going to try to do this uh, internet lesson thing, reviews on the lectures that we had. First of all, I hope you guys had an incredibly wonderful holiday. Hope everybody, everybody was safe, and I hope you continue to do so throughout the new year. Um, so, 7, 8, and 9 is the chapters that we're going to review here. I'm going to finish 9. Um, if you have any, any questions or, or comments, you know how to get in touch with me. Um, you know you can you know you have every way to get, you have every way to do that so just continue with doing what you're doing and and uh, we'll start with chapter 7 the range equation um, the time of flight or it's also called the go return time and the 13 microsecond rule again this is easy stuff you guys grasp this very well so we'll just breeze through this um, as stated several times before, to create an anatomical image, transducer emits a sound pulse, which bounces off a reflector, comes back to the transducer, voila, image. Um, the time of flight, or go return time, is that elapsed time from pulse creation to pulse reception. Remember, it is a time. Um, it determines the depth of a reflector and determines the reflector depth same exact thing. The definition is the time of flight is the elapsed time from pulse creation to pulse reception. What it helps us do is determine how deep that reflector is or how deep that object is that it bounces off of. When a reflector is located shallow of course that time is going to be short, correct? When a reflector is located deeper of course that time from pulse creation to pulse reception is going to be longer, requires more time. Figure 7 one in the book definitely shows that. Um, so this is such a simple principle that we can now say the time of flight is directly related to the depth that the sound pulse travels. Of course the further away the wall is, the longer it's going to take for that little ball that I throw in class to leave my hand, bounce off the wall and come back versus if I'm right next to the wall. It's an easy principle. And this picture reflects that. Greater distances, prolonged time of flight. Shorter distances, a shortened time of flight. The formula to find the depth of a reflector, um, depth in millimeters, is 1.54 millimeters per microsecond times the go return time, which is in microseconds, divided by two. That 1.54 millimeters per microsecond is what again? Correct, the speed of sound in soft tissue. It would only make sense that we would take that 1.54, multiply it times the go return time, divide it in half. Because we're only we only want to know halfway where we're going to, not there and back. That defines depth. So where does 1.54 again come from? Speed of sound in soft tissue. Very good. Crap, Mr. Ken, another damn formula. But wait, we also know that there's an easy way to figure this out. The 13 microsecond rule. For every 13 microseconds of go return time, the object creating that reflection or what the, what the sound beam is bouncing off of is one centimeter deep in soft tissue. So for every 13 microseconds, the reflector depth is one centimeter. When a reflector is two centimeters deep, a pulse's time of flight is 13 plus 13, 20 26 microseconds. When a reflector is three centimeters deep, a pulse's time of flight is 39 microseconds. 13 plus 13 plus 13. Simple rule. Now remember, that's the reflector depth, okay? So since a pulse travels to the reflector and back to the transducer, the total distance a pulse travels is twice the reflector depth, there and back. So if a reflector, if a time of flight is 26 microseconds, we know the reflector going there is two centimeters, back has to be another two centimeters, total distance traveled four centimeters. 
you got that y'all all understand that I can ask you the reflector depth I can ask you the total distance traveled you can figure out all of that using this rule so Kelly let us review understand and apply table 7 1 which is found on page 106 we have beat this horse to death uh, for every 13 microseconds the reflector depth is one centimeter therefore the total distance traveled is two centimeters so just follow that chart and it goes on and on and on and and you'll be fine if you can if you can add 13 a million times you can figure out reflector depth and total distance traveled so let's talk about the pulse repetition period and the maximum imaging depth or just imaging depth just they use the word maximum so that you understand that's the deepest you're going at that specific point and everything in between so remember that when we adjust the imaging depth we are changing the PRP why PRP is the start of one pulse to the start of the next pulse so when we change the PRP we're basically changing the 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 off time or the listening time because we can't change the the on time right pulse is a pulse is a pulse therefore the PRP is the time of flight from the sound pulse between the transducer and the bottom of the image when the depth of view is shallow the PRP is short right when the when the depth of view is deep the PRP is long and we know why each one of these is correct because the listening time is shorter when it's shallow the listening time is longer when the object is deeper that all should make perfect sense from what we've learned up until this point remember this is easy stuff I can't make it complicated so you guys are doing wonderful with it so mathematically in soft tissue then the PRP in microseconds because remember pulse repetition period is a time equals the imaging depth in centimeters times 13 microseconds per centimeter that 13 microseconds per centimeter is the 13 microsecond rule we plug in how deep we're going done it's 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 that easy so when a depth of view is set to 10 centimeters if you know the 13 microsecond rule 13 times 10 PRP is in microseconds 130 microseconds simple as that so what is the PRP if the depth of view is 5 centimeters 5 times 13 voila it is safe to, uh, it is safe to say that the PRP is directly related to the maximum imaging depth depth of course it is because that PRP is going to be longer when the depth increases or gets deeper but we already knew that mr. Ken yes you did because you learned it already we're just now breaking it down that much further and putting some numbers it's not just just a principle anymore it's it's fact so that's we're just we're just adding validity if you will to it um, the pulse repetition frequency and maximum imaging depth so now we're gonna talk about the frequency the PRF speed of sound in soft tissue is 1540 meters per second or 154,000 centimeters per second that's the same thing we did that day one of class breaking meters into centimeters and all that good stuff so that means in one second sound can travel into tissue and return from a depth of 77,000 centimeters or that reflector depth is 77,000 centimeters there and back would be 154,000 centimeters and everybody understands that so however we can break this down into a, a we're talking about a frequency so it's how many times per second we can do something uh, this also means that sound can travel to and from a depth of 77 centimeters a total of 1,000 times in one second so if we change in other words we just got closer instead of 77,000 centimeters we moved closer to it or shallower to 77 centimeters and in one second instead of one time we went a thousand times so our frequency increased the shallower we got you guys understand that it's simple 77,000 centimeters 
can be broken into a single trip or many thousands of round trips. That's all that is saying. We know that the closer we get to that object, the higher the frequency. The further away, the lower the frequency or PRF, correct? Remember, this is PRF. The amount of times, you know, the number of cycles per second. So when the depth of view is shallow, PRF is high. When the depth of view is deep, the PRF is low. So therefore, mathematically, PRF in Hertz, because frequency is in Hertz, our formula then becomes that 77,000 centimeters per second divided by the imaging depth. So it's constants, and then we plug in the imaging depth. So when a depth of view is set to 7.7, .7 centimeters the PRF is 10,000 Hertz all you're doing is you're taking that 77,000 divided by 7.7 .7, that's how you get 10,000 Hertz everybody should be crystal clear on that what is the PRF at the depth of view is 15.4 centimeters 77,000 divided by 15.4 so that all that is is that that should be very simple to figure out is it uh, it is safe to say then that the PRF is inversely related to the maximum imaging depth you already learned that now we're just again we're justifying it we're adding value to it okay so as that imaging depth decreases PRF increases as that imaging depth increases that PRF decreases so I'm gonna stop right there um, and I'm gonna break this up into a few videos because I think I only have like a 15 minute time limit so that's chapter 7 um, just review it it's simple straightforward easy you know it is what it is break it up if you have to as long as you understand your principles and can apply it to answer you can answer any question that I ask um, so go over that and after you're comfortable with that then look for chapter 8's video it should be right next to it somewhere